What is going on guys, it is Venom Search here and welcome back to another episode of Elder Scrolls Online. We are actually going to be increasing the amount of Elder Scrolls episodes that we're going to be doing. We're going to kind of alternate with God of War and then throw in a crazy craft every now and then. So today's episode, we are looking at Prisoner's Rags. This is a light armor set that you can get from Cold Harbor. We are using it on the jewelry and on the weapons. For the jewelry, we are doing full spell damage, max magicka for the trait. For the front bar, we are doing weapon damage, enchant with sharpened. And for the back bar, we are using crusher with sharpened. This is not a normal build at all. So, the main set, Prisoner's Rags, does max stam, stam recovery, stam recovery, reduces the cost of sprint by 50%. When sprinting, you restore 1k magicka every second. This is not at all a combat thing, and you don't sprint much in combat, if at all, unless you're doing PvP. This could be a PvP build, however, I did not build that in that way. I see this as a potential for a farmer for crafters. So we paired this with Jailbreaker. Jailbreaker is a medium armor set that you can get from Banish Cells 1 or 2 on normal or vet. It gives you max stam, stam recovery, stam recovery, a bigger piece of stam recovery, and then you gain minor expedition at all times, increasing your movement speed by 15%. We are doing divines and max magicka across the whole board. For our monster set, we are doing a one piece times two monster set, a broken monster set. We are using storm fist, which you can get from vet tempest island. We are just using one piece for stain recovery. Because this is the shoulders, you can actually just buy this from the Undaunted people. Then we are using Blood Spawn. Blood Spawn is a monster set that comes from Spindle Clutch number two. We are using a one piece with this as well. So the idea behind this build is we are fast. As you can see here, unbuffed, this is our movement speed. Just sprinting around. For those who have the DLC, you could instead put a prisoner's hat on and then use the Wild Hunt Reen. This will increase your movement speed by 45% outside of combat and 15% in combat. Now, I have not really noticed much of an improvement. We already are extremely fast. I can tell this is a bit faster, but we're just extremely fast. And if you look at our stam, we are barely going down. Just because a lot of people may not have that DLC, we are just going to stick with the broken monster set for now, just to get as much stam recovery as possible. Unbuffed, we are looking at 34.5k magicka, 18k health, 16k stam, 600 magicka recovery, 800 health recovery, 2.5k stam recovery, 3.4k spell damage, 19 crit chance, 8.8k penetration, and about 11.5k spell resist and 10k physical resist. All attributes into Magicka. And we are actually using the Steed Stone to get that more movement speed up. Now depending on the potion you use, you could use a Tri-Stat and get some of the other recoveries, but if you're trying to do damage, we are looking at about 4.5k spell damage and 30% crit chance when buffed and our magicka recovery goes up to 7.8k. If we pop a tri-stat potion, we get to about 3.1k stam recovery, 10k health recovery, and 7.8k mag recovery. For our food, because we are a farmer, this is for farming resources around Tamriel, we want to have a lot of stam recovery because we're sprinting, but we also might run into the occasional monster. So you could do Jewels of Misrule, this will give you stam and mag recovery, and then max health, just to get you a little more tanky. However, right now I am using Crunchy Spider Skewer. This gives you max magicka, which will help our damage output, but then gives us stam recovery so we can keep on sprinting. For the potions, we have three options, so for the most part you'll be using the Tri-Stat Potion. This is while you're running around doing your normal farming. If you happen to run into enemies and your potion's off cooldown and you know you're going to have to fight them, you could use a Spellcaster, which will give you the Major Sorcery and Prophecy to get more damage output. 
now on to the skills. So our primary staff here is only if we are entering combat, otherwise you will be on your back bar for the majority of the time. So the first skill is Elemental Drain. This is the Destruction Staff skill. You apply Major Breach to the enemies and Minor Magic of Steel for 23 seconds. The next skill is Impale from the Assassin skill line. This is the Magicka morph, so it's a long ranged execute. We are then using Siphoning's attacks from the Siphoning skill tree, also Magicka. We are Magicka focused, however we can use Stam stuff. This will heal us for 1.5k health and we restore 100 Magicka for 20 seconds. And then we gain an additional 4.3k Magicka once the effect ends. The next skill is Merciless Resolve. This is from the Assassination skill line. When this is active, every time you light attack, you increase your weapon and spell damage by 60 up to 5 times. Once you hit 5 stacks, the skill turns into a bow skill that will do 20k magic damage and heals you for half of the damage dealt if you're in melee range. Once again, magic aversion. The next skill, which is our main spammable if we run into combat, is Swallow Soul from the Siphoning skill line. This is a long ranged 10k attack hit that we also heal for 37% of the damage inflicted every 2 seconds for 10 seconds. This can actually stack across multiple enemies so you can get a lot of heals coming in. Our main ulti is Soul Harvest. You deal about 16k magic damage and your damage increases against them by 20% for 6 seconds. They also get Major Defile, but while slotted, anytime you get a kill, you gain 10 ultimate. On our back bar, like I said, this is where you will spend the majority of your time and just farming your resources. The first skill is Concealed Weapon. You can use this to attack, it does do 10k damage, which is very good. However, the main reason for using this is while slotted your movement speed, while sneaking or invisible, is increased by 25%. Also, if you flank somebody with this, you can set them off balance for 3 seconds. Because of the new hybrid changes, we can use STAM skills. So, in case your Magicka runs out, which it will, because we don't have any Magicka recovery whatsoever, we have a STAM execute and a STAM spammable just in case. So, Poison Inject is our execute here. You deal 4.5k poison damage up front and about 8k over 10 seconds and they can deal up to 100% more damage the lower health they get from the bow skill line. In the shadow skill line, the next skill we're using is shadowy disguise. When you hit this, you become invisible for 3 seconds. If you activate any other skills while invisible though, you will get out of it, so you don't want to do that. The next damage a direct damage attack used within three seconds will always be a critical strike. That can be nice, especially if you are going to have to end up killing something. The next skill, still in the same skill line, is Refreshing Path. This is a carpet that you put in front of yourself. When you're in the carpet, you gain Major Expedition for four seconds, and it stays for four seconds after you leave the path. It also heals you for 2k health every second. The main reason why we chose this morph rather than the damaging morph is this is for farming. You're going to be invisible a lot trying to get away from all the enemies. If this damaged enemies, they'll aggro on you and you're going to be wasting time, whereas if it heals, they won't aggro on you. The next skill is once again back in the bow line. This is our spammable for Stam. You can actually spam this quite often with how much Stam recovery we got. It does about 10k damage and applies minor breach on the enemy, which is very nice, especially because we also have Crusher on that same bar. The next ulti is Soul Tether from the Siphoning skill line. You deal 13k magic damage up front in an AoE, and then you heal for half the damage. Everybody is stunned for 4 seconds and you tether to the enemies that you initially hit and as long as they're still in 10 meters from you you siphon 2.3k health from them every second somebody can also pop a synergy and deal an additional 12k magic damage and heal for the damage caused now as some call outs you can use sap essence this will be an aoe spammable it'll heal you for a good amount and give you major brutality and sorcery However, this is a farming build, you're not supposed to be doing a lot of damage, you're mainly supposed to be avoiding things and trying to get to your resources. If you have the fish stick skill line, 
you could do channeled acceleration. This will give you major expedition for 12 seconds, which is a lot nicer, rather than trying to spam this skill out every four seconds. There's also call outs to Sorks and Wardens. They also have their own version of a quick little major expedition buff that they can provide. Now, in the assault line, there is charging maneuver, not maneuver as I always read it as, but it only lasts for 8 seconds and it is very expensive so I don't consider that to be worth it. On your Destro side, if you are running into a lot of AoE fights, you could actually slot Pulsar. This is a kind of an underrated skill. It does 6k damage to everybody and it, if they're not a boss they get minor mangle, reducing their max health by 10% for 10 seconds. But with the flame version, it's actually an AoE execute as long as they have the burning status effect, which you get a guaranteed apply using destructive clench. So those two are a fun and actually kind of powerful combination of skills. However, with Swallow Soul and Impale, you tend to kill things extremely quickly, even with our low stats on this build. Next up for champion points, for once the green tree actually matters. First we're getting Steed's Blessing, increase our movement speed outside of combat. You should for the, pretty much all the time be outside of combat. Next active skill is Treasure Hunter. Ideally while you're farming your plants and stuff, it is also nice to pick up those chests and this will give you better quality. Because we are harvesting things, Master Gatherer is very important, reduces your harvest time by 50%. And then Plentiful Harvest is also very nice, you get a 50% chance to double the yield. Now if you are not actively farming but you're going on the way to the farm spot, these two skills are very nice. Increases your, move, your mount speed by 10%. And then, as long as you're outside of combat, your mount doesn't use stamina when it's sprinting, so that's extremely nice. For passes, I would also get this reduced fall damage. With how fast we are, I fall off of things all the time, and that saves me. Depending on how you're farming, you might be using way shrines a lot, this can help a lot as well. In the blue tree, we are not exactly a damage dealer. Still get all the passes when you can, but it is not as important in the blue tree. What is nice is you can get to this pretty quickly since you don't need to go through things. However, I would come into here, get offensive penetration, and then get weapons expert. Light attacks actually put out uh, like one of the top two damage outputs in your rotations, even if it's against little adds. Then we're gonna come up here to deadly aim. We're pretty much only doing single target attacks and this will make us very powerful having this and Master at Arms, which is direct damage attacks, those two will affect our skills. We don't really have any AoE or DOT skills. And since we don't crit barely at all, this crit damage is not really worth it, so just getting more weapon damage is better. In the red tree, this is actually also important, so we're not going for any armor or anything like normal. So still get your passes when you can, but we are going to go into Wind Chaser here as soon as possible. First get your celerity, increasing your movement speed by an additional 10%. Then come up here, refreshing stride will give you 500 health recovery and 500 magicka recovery while you're sprinting. This will allow us to spam out our refreshing path. My magicka is already full and then I can just plop that down again. So between the set and that active CP star, we can just run for days. And we're gonna come up to here and get some survival instincts. This, I believe, should be reducing the cost of our sprints as it's core combat skills, not actual skills that we slot on our bar. So this should maybe count. I would also try to get sprinter, reduce the cost of sprint even further. For sure, get your stealth detection reduced. We are also gonna come down here get roll dodge cost low and we're actually going to get expert evasion making a free roll dodge every 30 seconds and you will see why shortly now for the passes once again this is a farming build so it is not important at all pretty much as far as damage output but for our recoveries and stuff i will mention the things that are important when an enemy dies you gain 1k magic gun stamina 
you're not gonna kill things that often, but this can help out. In the shadow line, make sure you get this. This just increases your recoveries flat out no matter what by 15%. I would also get shadow barrier. Whenever you activate your shadow skills, you get major resolve, which means when we pop this, we actually get 17k spell resist and 16k physical resist. I would also get Dark Veil increasing the non-invisibility based shadow abilities, which is pretty much just refreshing path that we will be using, which will give us a longer duration of the skill, not the buff. It's still only 4 seconds for a major expedition, but you might happen to run across it again and reset that skill buff timer once again you shouldn't be fighting that often but in the siphoning tree catalyst is very nice get your potions because you're going to be constantly using them to get your stam recharged so you'll always have a full ultimate in the bow line this is why we got the experts roll dodge active in our cp this bow line skill right here hasty retreat as long as you have a bow equipped that is why you will be on this bar for the most part Whenever you roll dodge, you get Major Expedition for 4 seconds. So you can pop this down, and you're going along. Sometimes though, it's annoying that you have to stop sprinting, hit your skill, wait for it to proc, and then sprint again. So instead, you could just roll dodge, instantly get it back up, and sprint again. In the Destruction Staff, get Ancient Knowledge as soon as possible. This will make your single target abilities increased by 10% damage even more. That stacks with everything else, that is very important. And then also get 10% ignoring spell resistance, that is also good, and try focus can help if you're having a heavy attack to get your Magicka back. Now, I don't believe I told you guys this when I was going over the armor. So everything from Jailbreaker is medium, however, our monster set, we are actually using light. Because in the medium armor tree, you get stam recovery and reduce the cost of stam abilities. We don't have many stam abilities, but the stam recovery is very nice. Reduces the cost of sneak and sneak detection is a lot harder. Increased movement speed while sprinting and reduce the cost of roll dodge. However, we don't get a decrease the cost of sprint. So those two light armor pieces are in the bonuses here. We get reduced roll dodge by 3%, reduce movement speed penalty from sneaking by 5%, reduce effectiveness of snares by 8%. We get a little bit more magicka recovery here and reduce cost of magicka abilities. But the main part in grace here is what you want, reduce the cost of sprint by 3% per piece, so it's 6% for us. If you have the excavation skill line from Greymore DLC, it is very nice to get keen eye, especially while you're farming, because you'll pick up those chests even quicker. In the assault line, try to get continuous attack just so you can get major gallop at all times, increasing your mount speed. Now, because of the hybrid changes, resolving vigor is actually a very good heal for us, even though we're magicka based. Look at that heal 16k over 4 seconds, and we're magicka based. It's even more on our magicka staff. 17k rather than 16 and a half k we are an orc we get max stam max health and then we gain healing every now and then when we take damage this is the main reason why though you want to get swift warrior as soon as possible increases your weapon and spell damage by 258 but more importantly it reduces the cost of sprint by 12 percent and increases movement speed of sprint by 10 percent now, in the alchemy line, medicinal use is extremely important to keeping your buffs up at all times from your potions, which will include the tristat potion. Now, because this is a farmer, it is also important that you get keen eye on everything possible. I would do keen eye last on enchanting, just because enchanting already has the glowing red light on the runes so they're already easy to see but this will make it even easier now this doesn't exactly have a rotation however if you run into an enemy if it's something like a troll that has a boss bar you're gonna want to throw on your major breach to help take it down even quicker and you could put on your siphoning skills here just to get more buffs and healing coming in if you know it's going to be a longer fight but usually with a normal add you could light attack swallow soul 
light attack, impale. Usually that's enough to kill them. Maybe you have to do two swallow souls, but usually that's good enough. Now, the thing with this bow skill, look how it looks like that kind of hooded, mysterious looking person. Let me activate it here. So now it's the normal look. There's stacks building up and then it turns colors to that purple thing. The cool thing is you don't need to activate that. When that timer runs out, the stacks stay, which means the 300 weapon and spell damage stays with us, even if that timer runs out. So we can actually end up getting pretty high numbers. We're now close to 5K spell damage, and we're just gonna keep that stack, watch. The skill just ran out of time, but it's still up. You can even see it right here. So as long as you don't leave an instance or teleport, this will stay with you at all times, even if you swap bars. So I would just recommend building that up, leave it at five stacks as you're farming around, and that'll just make all of your skills do more damage. Now that's 10 and a half K. That's 5.7 K. But if I were to activate this skill now, now we're down 10, 9K, we lost 1K damage from that. And we lost a couple hundred damage from that, which will end up being a lot more since that's our execute. So it's very important to keep this thing up. This is not as needed unless you're fighting a lawn fight. This will heal you and give you magicka back. Like I said, we're mainly on our back bar. Now, with our invisibility skill, I'm not actually crouched. I Not a lot of people know this, but you don't need to crouch first and then do it. See how slow we are? I'm gonna uncrouch now. Look how much faster we are. We're technically uncrouched right now, but when we activate the skill, we're still invisible. So you can technically walk around. You cannot sprint, but you can walk around like that and stay invisible. Now the magicka slowly goes down but that's why we have tripods. So you can just run around like this and pick your flowers. Okay, so we're over here in Ardon to show this out. So you got your dragon thorn, your magic flower, whatever. So because of that passive from the CP, that active skill, I mean, we pick things up with one click. Usually when you do this, you pull at the weeds twice. So we can just run around doing this. Now let's say like we see that thing right there or maybe that thing over there. Sometimes it's not worth it to pop our refreshing path and then sprint if we're close like this. It's faster to just run. That's where the wild hunt ring would be helpful. Now I'm not even using it right now. So let's say we didn't see that wood and we're just running around and we're looking for specific things. Well, we can keep popping this, run around here, get our little imp poop. There's a chest there. I wouldn't have seen that if I didn't have that glow. Okay, so let's say you're running a lawn and then, oh no, we have enemies here now. And I want that flower. So I'm gonna swap to my back bar there's a glitch right now where the staff is invisible, just ignore that. So, first, we don't have our five stacks yet, so we're gonna build up our stacks here. So that's not normally what would happen. Let's say there was something near here. We would light attack, swallow soul. In this case, we might need to do it twice. That actually killed them right away. Sometimes they're weak enough that you can just swallow soul and then execute them. That time happened to be fine. So let's say like this imp. See that just barely left him alive. So we just wasted time there. Whereas like a bear, we're gonna need to do it twice, but it still ends up killing them. So, and this is what I mean with this. It already has this red glow, but it still helps show these things out. So for the most part, people will just leave it alone, or you might be running along, just go invisible, ignore everything. But it's only when things are like right on top of your wood here that you want, that's when you're gonna need to kill something sometimes, so that's where you just swap to your back bar, murder them, and then continue moving on. 
see, especially places like this, you really don't want to get caught fighting here just because we are only single target damage. Like I said, you can slot those AoE skills, however, that's not great. We're still not built for damage. But, we're still going to do our damage test. We are by no means tanky, and we don't do a lot of damage compared to normal DPS, and we're all single target. But, we can at least somewhat survive to an extent. So we're going to still build up our stacks here, we're actually going to throw on this thing. So these guys are tough, this is a DLC dungeon. I mean, I'm taking damage here, so we're going to throw out our path. This not only heals me, but gives me our movement speed. I can go invisible if I need to get away from everybody. But the one nice thing about this build is we are all completely ranged. So we're going to debuff the enemy here, swallow soul, execute once they're ready. But look at this, my magicka already low. I can activate my bow skill if I want there. But my magic is going to be getting low, so you swap to your back bar, you can throw out your stam things. I'm still doing like 19k there, 11k on a non-crit, 20k right there. My main skill is doing like 12k, so I mean our snipe is doing even more. And look at our stats, I mean we're magicka based. That was, I mean they were kind of threatening to us, but not too much. And it took us a while to kill them because their DLC multiple adds. I mean, this thing is, like I said, it's not supposed to be doing damage, but we can if you need it to. Now, I would still very much recommend using these Magicka skills rather than the bow stuff. The snipe can be doing more damage, as you saw back there, but... The Poison Execute is not as much instant damage as our uh, Magicka Execute. And so when you're farming, the Magicka Execute will take less time to kill. Now just so you guys know, that purple buff when you sprint, that is our Prisoner's Rags going off. That's Every time you hear that proc, it's giving us that 1k Magicka. Now currently this is all Divine stuff, like I said earlier. You could go for something like well fitted, this would reduce the cost of sprint, but it doesn't increase your movement speed, so our movement speed would go down by doing that. Now, as for Mundestone options, I mean right now we are using the Steed, however, you could do the Serpent if you wanted more stam recovery, or the Apprentice if you want to do more spell damage, but this is a farming build, so those are not exactly as high priority so in this beautiful house over here we have our outfit threw down these lights so that way you can hopefully see my armor a bit better for the helmet we are actually using the pit daemon helm for the breastplate we're using the light welkinar jerkin for the shoulders we are using the light fargrave guardian epaulets for the hands we are using the light pinadonian gloves for the waist, we are using the light Trinimac Sash. For the legs, we are using the light Trinimac Breeches. For the feet, we are using medium Fane Layer Boots. For the staff, we are using the Ashlander Staff. For the bow, we are using the Pyandonian Bow. There's the arrow quiver. For the white color we are using soul shriven pale and for the blues we are using tainted turquoise and once again I'll go over the colors here for the pattern so you guys can copy with that okay guys I hope you enjoyed this build this was a weird one as we were using a speed set rather than a normal damage healer tank build this is for farmers which may not be as uh, much of a majority 
but it was a very actually fun build to make and we actually did get a little bit of damage output for this just in case if you happen to run into the occasional mob or two. Like and subscribe if you guys want to see more of this content. If there's any other sets that you guys would like me to check out, I am going over all of the non-popular sets. Comment down below if there's any that you would like me to check out before I get to two other ones first. I will see you guys next time.